to the CBF Podcast. Are you ready? Are you ready? Live, live from our Miami headquarters, broadcasting around the world. Live, you're locked in to the CBF Podcast with your hosts, Caden Boozer and Benny Frahela. We talk. You listen. You listen. I want you to listen. Listen carefully. Very carefully. This is the CBF Broadcast, streaming worldwide and beyond. Hello, and welcome back to the CBF Broadcast. Um, we're back in the studio, and here's some highlights that we saw from Bowling on the Beach. What's up, I'm Benny Vigella. Katie Boozer. And we're here live on Bowling on the Beach. Come watch. Yeah. Pretty nice. I like Strike for Greatness, the way they play. Bro, they be throwing the lobs, they're real nice. They're fun to watch. Like they're they they can be good at defense, but they also like make the game fun to watch. Yeah, I see they're like a bunch of glass, they get glassing people the whole entire game. Like they're good they're a good defensive team and an offensive team. They they show a highlight reel, like the one we just saw, that's that's like crazy. They don't play around but they but they still like play like action and they and they get the job done. As we saw a lot of good teams like Shrapper Greatness at Balling the Beach though. At Balling the Beach they had like it was a real it was a really good turn, man. I like the way everything was set up and everything. Like Team Durant at uh, eighth grade team it's pretty good. Yeah they be, they beat Bronny for a reason. They were they're really good. I mean I, I I feel like they're number one. I I think they're number one in the country right now. I think in, in my opinion. I don't know they might be but league. like Cause Shabazz is also good, and they I think they beat the team Durant. Yeah, they did. I I think they did. Yeah, they beat um team Durant, but team Durant has a, like they're really good. They have good chemistry. I saw the way they play. They flow the ball like real natural. They have a good ball movement. Yeah. And Bronny's dunk in the game that was nasty too. You, you, did you see when he tried to dunk on those two people? He missed, but that was he was up there. He was like his dad over his, there. His head his head was above the rim. Yeah, I saw that. But one thing we gotta talk about is like the main topic of the day, AD was traded to the Los Angeles Lakers. In return, the Pelicans got Lonzo Ball, Brendan Ingram, and the fourth pick of the NBA draft. Who do you think won the trade? Um, I think the Lakers won the trade, because the Pelicans, they got Lonzo Ball, a potential good player, Brendan Ingram's okay, but that fourth pick will probably be good for them. And, but I think they're gonna trade the fourth pick before before Thursday, because on Thursday, I, no, they're gonna trade the fourth pick for, for I think, an, another pick later in the draft. Or, two other or they picks. can trade their fourth pick in for for a better free agent. I, I agree with you though. Uh, I think the Lakers won the tr- um, the trade because Lonzo Ball was um he ca- he came out the he came out the season like stiff. I didn't I didn't see him very good at the end of the season. And Brandon Ingram is coming up with block shots. Like he's he's starting to get it on his arm. Yeah. Like if a- if AD stays with the Lakers next year also, I think it's really important for um because that was the Lakers that was the Lakers like main goal to get another star in LA and if they get another one during free agency that's gonna be huge. I feel like the Pelicans should have tried to get Kyle Kuzma with that trade because Kyle Kuzma he's that's, been averaging that's, 18 that's points. where um, the Lakers won. They, 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 they kept, kept Kyle they kept Kuzma. If they would have kept Lonzo then I feel like it would have been even but the Lakers won that one. Another problem going on in the West, Western Conference is the Rockets. Chris Paul requested a trade that, that was a report from Woj and then we got Chris Paul tweeting on it on um on Twitter, damn, that's news to me. Like, what is, what does this mean? What is going on with the Rockets right now? I mean, they. I think there's a lot of problems because they have such a good team, but they keep on coming short in the in the playoffs. And I think Chris Paul kind of wants to get out so he can have like a better chance. To, like, I don't. I don't think Chris Paul wants to get out. I think he wants to stay there. I, I don't know what's going on. That's what I'm. I, we need more information on this. Like, Chris Paul is requesting a trade, not requesting it. Getting in a fight with James Harden. He hasn't talked to him in months. I, I, like we don't know 
if the Rockets are going to be the same Rockets they were um, last season at. The Rockets we saw two years ago, that was a really good team. I don't think we're going to see that again. I mean, Chris Paul has already got into like this type of problem with the Clippers. That he, re he, that he It was reported that he requested a trade, but he said he didn't request it. And then he went to the Rockets. Yeah, he's, re he's really good at like admitting that he didn't request a trade. He's really good at uh, trying to get out of drama. Yeah, I, he, he doesn't deal with the drama. He doesn't deal with it. Oh, no, the Rockets have a bunch of problems and conflicts. But Thursday, we all know what that is. NBA draft day. Tell me your top five picks. Top five picks, okay. First pick, obviously Zion. Zion Williamson, he's a great player. He's gonna get a lot of seats. Um, second second pick for the Memphis Grizzlies, I think John ja Morant. Cause John ja Morant's an all around player, all around point guard. He can do everything on the court. And jumped over someone. That was in college. Um, the third pick of the draft, I think will be RJ Barrett, because RJ, I think, had a good had a good year in college, and he's already projected to be the third pick. Mm -mm. Fourth pick, this is kind of hard. Um, I think Darius Garland, because he did. I know his uh, college career was cut short, but he had a good high school career, and he averaged 16 points in college in the games he played. I think the the fifth pick, I think it will go to the. I think um, I think they're gonna pick Jared Culver. Because he, he averaged 19 points a game and he's a good the offense and defensive player. Where's Bobo? No, Bobo. Bobo is a top 10 pick, not, not top 5. But Bobo's like the best player in the draft. No. He dunked. When All dunking, player, most players in the draft can dunk. That's true. Zion can dunk. Cam Reddish can dunk. How come he's not top 5? Because he had a terrible college career. But I, mean, I, I, saw, I saw his high school highlights, those were nice too. He, 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 um, he broke some of my ankles, that was great. I mean, in, in high school, he was, he was bigger than everyone. But now, he has Zion, which doesn't make him look so good. No, he's taller than Zion. He's like, Cameron's like 6'9". For real? I mean, yeah, he's 6'9 with like a 7 foot wingspan. Yeah, but I know that Zion, is, yeah, obviously Zion's the best, um, the best pick for for any team. Yeah, especially for the Pelicans. Now they have Lonzo and Brandon Ingram and Josh Hart. And they and the uh, like and they can I also get a good point a good point guard if you need to I'm or pretty sure um Ball's life they posted a picture of Lonzo going like that doing the Dwayne Wade LeBron dunk him throwing it up and then like that. I saw that. I, that's gonna be that's gonna be fun to watch. You never know. What what about John Moran? You know I t I said he jumped over someone. I feel like that was, we never, we, that was important. We gotta talk about um, free agency since we're talking about the draft. You know we got to. Yeah, I guess. If you want to. But there's one thing we gotta talk about though. The mugs though! They just pop out. What, where were they before? I didn't see them. That's weird. It's first class education. I didn't know what that meant. Let's just keep going. Um, Kyrie, free agency, where do you think he's gonna land? I think, especially because they just signed a Rock Nation, which is a really good company in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, so. but I think Kyrie is going to the Lakers. Let me explain why. Because the Lakers, they have this got AD, and Kyrie's been saying that he wanted he wants to play with AD. He's been wanting to play with AD for months, and it would also be like a good big three for the, the Western Conference Finals. And I think they would they would they would win a championship with that that big three. I think you're wrong. I think that um, Kyrie is going to go to the Nets. Why? Because where, where is um, Rock Nation based off? Brooklyn. And um, where where is um, Kyrie just bought a, a house? Where did Kyrie just buy a house? It doesn't matter though. Yeah, it does. Brooklyn are trash. Yeah, but he can make them better. I think he wants to have his own team, but still have other players. Cause they, I think he knows something that people don't know. What What did he know? Like that the Nets are gonna get someone. Maybe KD. Like who? KD's gonna be injured for probably most of the year. I know, but he can sign for a four year. And uh, people, are, people are still offering him a bunch of contracts. I've seen uh, the Lakers offer them something. No, no, no. Kevin Durant's going to the Lakers. He's and Kyrie. Shooting guard. And Kyrie. Yeah. So they're just gonna have the uh, Warriors and the Lakers. They're gonna have a super team in LA. A super team? Yeah. I think you're wrong. I think it's How? gonna be. How? I think the future is in New York. In Brooklyn. New York? Somewhere around there. New York's there. never gonna be good. They were only good when they had Patrick Ewing. Yeah, but Kyrie's gonna sign up the Nets. The, the Nets weren't good unless they had Jason Kidd. He's gonna sign it because he's likely no. to sign no. it. He, he's gonna talk to Boston about it and everything. I know. Who's, who's gonna play with? Jared Allen? Yeah. He's, 
And D'Angelo Russell. Oh no, D'Angelo Russell, Russell is gonna leave. Leaving. If he, if Kyrie signs, he's gonna leave. So who's, who's gonna play? Alan Crabb. Yes. That team is terrible. But he can help them. But he's in the Eastern Conference. This is his conference. First of all, it's Giannis. And if KD goes to the conference, then it's both of their conference. First of all, it's Kawhi's conference. Because Kawhi's the best player in the NBA besides LeBron. Nah, third place player. Who, who's better than him? KD. KD's injured. Well, he's better than him. No. Like as an overall player? No. KD can't play as good as defense as Kawhi. And Kawhi averaged more points than KD. Speaking, and more speaking of Toronto, though, you know we got to talk about. Drake got two new songs. Not, not one, two new songs just for Toronto. What are the two songs? Fire or trash? Uh, wait, what are the two songs? Omarta. Omarta and, and Money in the Grave. Okay. Uh, talk about Omarta first. Omarta? Omarta has, uh, Mar Omarta is fire. Omarta has some good lines. It talks about, um, Mr. Bronny James. Yep. It talks about uh, buying Brent Will like he's doing Akron. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's not a hit. I mean, it's just him rapping to a beat, no hook or anything. But it's like Drake at his. Uh, it's still his Drake best. though. It's Drake at his best, yeah. And then we got um, Money in the Grave. Okay. That song. Okay, Money in the Grave. That song gets you high. Yeah, that yeah. song is good. Rick Ross. Rick, uh, I like Rick Ross in that song. I I haven't liked Rick Ross in the past few years, but that song he killed it too. That's why he's a boss. He proved that he's yeah, a he boss. Bounce. 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 No, no bouncing. He doesn't have, he doesn't have bounce because he's pretty big. But yeah, he just says bounce a lot. But the hook is fire. I like the hook and the whole iron hook. I like Drake's verse. I like Rick Ross' verse, but I like Drake's verse better. Cause he's rapping. He's not like no guidance. Yeah. But to no be honest, I, I, have, I have to be honest. I have to like last show I said that no guidance wasn't good. I have to be honest with you. It's really good. I like. No, it's not. It's, it's trash. It's really good. Shh, no, it's, it's terrible. terrible. Yeah, how is it good? How is it good, huh? Because I, li I like the whole entire transition. I like Chris even Brown carry. There's even a little part of the song that's like there's nothing going on. It's just like music playing and Chris Brown going. Oh, oh, oh. That, that's a part of the song. I know, but then when when Drake comes back to and he goes freaky, I can read your mind. You. That that, that part's good. I, I like the whole entire thing. No, well I only like Chris Brown's part. Oh, we in the back and I'm breaking it. Five. You know what we gotta talk about the the Ontario Raptors um the championship group. Yep. What what was the what was the what was your favorite moments? Um, when Kawhi when Kawhi went up and uh he did his he trolled his own he laugh. trolled his own laugh. That, that, uh -huh. that made me laugh so hard. Uh -huh. Yo, and then the um someone from the Raptors said, "What it do, baby?" Because he said that Serge Ibaka and him are like good friends. Like you you don't see Kawhi a lot on the internet. But and let's take like, of Serge Ibaka. Yeah, because Serge Ibaka um, has like much of um, he has Twitter, he has Instagram, he has a bunch of social media. So he's always with Kawhi Leonard posting stuff. He just posted something like um, yesterday, and he was like, Kawhi, what's your diet gonna be after you just won a championship? Kawhi was like, dessert and alcohol. That's exactly what he said. Well, I do you think the I think that's a big part why he's gonna resign with the Raptors also. Yeah, how much, how much fun, and then Kawhi, um, Kyle Lowry went up to the crowd. He was like, five more years, five more years. And then you see Kawhi with his um, I mean, cigar. I mean, Kawhi, I mean, we don't know about, about Kawhi because Kawhi, he said at the beginning of the year that he wanted to go to LA. But like, I, think it'll, I think his decision will probably change because of the championship and the connection he had with all of the players. Yeah, I feel like in the beginning of the season, he was like, you know what, next year I'm gonna be with LA, I'm gonna be with LeBron, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be myself. But then he got on the Raptors. I think he knows that that's his country. That's his team now. He is the star player, he gets to eat free wherever he goes, because they won. And, and they're giving him uh, things to warm himself, because it gets get kind of cold in Toronto. Oh yeah, they, I've seen, um, yeah, he got a bunch of like gifts and everything from, uh, even, from even from Toronto players. Yeah. I, I, saw, I heard that they, uh, they and, gave um, him a cactus. The, G, the GM did, uh, I think he's a, he did a really good job with um, Messiah. Yeah, I think he did a good job of firing the coach. Like a lot of people thought that uh, was the good move. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, yeah, I'm excited for the future of the Raptors. Yeah. I think they have a, a good chance of becoming more than a, a one-time champion. Yeah, they got a lot of problems and conflicts. You know who got speed though? Who? Coach Joe. From Chef for Greatness? Yep, let's call him right now.
What's up, Joe? It's Benny. Okay. What's going on, guys? How are you? Good, good. Um, we're recording right now, so we're, we're gonna ask you some questions, all right? All right, cool. Let's do it. All right. Um, tell us how you think the experience was for players um, last week in Balling the Beach. Uh, I definitely think it was a great experience for players. Uh, you know, they got to come all from all over the country. You know, some people came from out of the country. And uh, they definitely got to mix and mingle with uh, some of the best talent in the country that play all under one roof. So, just the fact from... Just the, just the fact from experience, getting them down here, letting them mingle learning how uh, to play against great guys, great competition, and then also being in South Florida, I think they had a great time. Okay, I got a question for you. Do you consider a parent when you're scouting for players? Say that again? Do you consider parents when you're scouting for players? Definitely. Definitely consider parents. Uh, kids can be great, but if a parent's a headache, we're, we're not taking them. Um, so... I want to know how Strife for Greatness started. Strife for Greatness started, um, good question. Strife for Greatness started um, as an idea. Uh, sat down, talked with uh, the camp about it, and uh, we just kind of went forward. You know, that that um, Strife for Greatness uh, trademark is important, and it means something already. So uh, just trying to get players to Strife for Greatness, if that makes sense. Right, um, one, last, one last question. Is it ever hard to be coaching Strife for Greatness and North Coast Blue Chips in the same tournament? Uh, no. Only because, you know, we love doing it. Um, the only, some, sometimes the only time it might be a problem is if they play at the same time, but luckily we haven't ran into that problem. But um, it's, it's fun, you know, and the best part about it is the kids feed off of each other's energy, so. Uh, if little brothers, North Coast Blue Chips, watching Big Brothers play, uh, they're cheering them on and vice versa. So it's, it's not hard. It's actually fun. All right. Thanks, Joe. No problem. Thank you for, uh, thank you for thank being you. on our show. Thank you for coming. Always, always. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep up the good work. All right. All right, you guys. Bye. Special thanks to Joe from Strive for Greatness. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and share. I'm Katie Boozer. I'm Benny Fragella. This is CBS Podcast, and, and we, we out. out.